kind of thinking about, you know, because like Robert Jordan, he'd passed before he finished Wheel of Time. We've still got George Martin still kind of figuring this out. So how long are you planning your series? And are you like ever nervous that you're like, maybe I'll never get this done or like, what, you know? Actually, well, I mean, that uh, maybe I should I should be nervous. Um but I probably shy away from thoughts of my own mortality <laughs> more than anything else, so I don't consider it too much. But so I know the end of the story, um, and I know the basic points that I want each book to finish on to get to that end. Um, there are going to be seven books in the series and a couple of standalones that may come in between. Like I've got one that's coming between book two and book three, um, which I'll start working on as soon as I send book two off to um, my beta readers. Because one of the things that it's, it's been a couple of years since I released book one and one of the reasons, apart from life getting in the way um, the last two years, I kind of stopped writing while I was waiting for feedback and, you know, doing all the, the production side of book, of book one to get it out there. And that, for me, I, kind of, I need to be writing constantly to keep it flowing. If mm -hmm. I stop, it's like I've got to build that momentum up again. Um, mm -hmm. So like one push, of the pushing the boulder and getting started yeah. is the hardest part. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So one of the things that I'm planning now is that right, I'm not going to rest on my laurels and have to take a break while I'm waiting for feedback on book two. I'll start pushing ahead with writing book book well, two point five, and so so that's that's happening. I do find it difficult to work on another project when another when the previous project is not completely wrapped up. I like having doing one job at a time, so this whole multitasking thing, I'm not the best at it, but mm -hmm. I'll, um, I'm going to I'm going to give it a, a shot because I don't want um, to be waiting. I don't want I don't want to wait or work for years at a time on a single book, or have people who are actually invested in the story and, and waiting on the next book to wait that long either. Yeah. Do you have, um, so it sounds like, I mean, I think most longer fantasy series, I suppose, except for in the case of George Martin, but definitely requires a lot more outlining for sure. Like planning. And yeah. so do you, do you, seems like you really enjoy the world building aspect. Are you definitely more of an outliner or how do you um, kind of go about your writing process? So with book one, I wasn't as much of an outliner i did have i have the i have the main points and i got to interview elizabeth moon once in my days working at galaxy bookshop and she described her process which i, I thought was really it, it is actually quite similar to mine was it was like she was standing at the top of uh of a plateau looking out across a mist-filled valley and she can see you know there's a peak of a hill over there that's poking out of the mist and there's another place over there but she doesn't know what the lay of the land in between the 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 hills is like and she has to go through that to get to those hills so she has these points that she's playing to reach and as she goes on her hike it's she's discovering what the lay of the land is between them and that's kind of like how I see what I do myself. I have these plot points or these peaks that I can see that I want to get to, but the details of how I'm actually going to get there, I kind of discover as I go. As I've been writing book two, there's been a lot more planning happening or outlining in for book two than there was in book one. Um, at the end of book two, they're the main characters that you've been um, following through the first book without any real spoiler there. For whatever reasons, they um, the group becomes separated. And so book two, so while as in book one, I could follow, they were all together for most of the chapters and you could do different point of views for different chapters, but they're all together. So they're all experiencing the same story, just you relating it through a different character's eyes. I now have these characters are separated and they have to follow their own stories and I have to give those stories. It's like I'm writing a couple of different books at the same time, to be honest, because I've got all yeah. the main characters who are in different places doing different things that are all eventually, you know, at different points in the series come back together. And I've got to, I've got to work out where they are at any given time and 
what's going on with them. And I found when I was started writing book two, I would I wrote book one sequentially, so chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, the whole way through. This time around, I found that I was just getting I felt like I was getting momentum in one character and one character's story, and then I would stop and switch to another character for the next chapter and have to start that whole process of building momentum up again. Mm-hmm. So I stopped doing that and I was like, right, I'm taking this character and I'm writing all their chapters because they're completely separate from everybody else and they're not going to interact with them. So they don't need to, I don't need to have think what other people are doing. And so I did that and I finished their char- their chapters and now I've gone back and I've done part of another one and then I'm following one of the main characters. There are two main characters and then a side secondary characters around them. And I'm doing one of the main characters at the moment and I'm nearly finished their story, I think. Yeah, I am. I, I, it's not I think. I'm past the halfway mark, but this is just – this manuscript is becoming huge and it's kind of stressing me out <laughs> because yeah. of the word count when I've still got another – uh, the second the second main character's story to write as well yeah so there's so what i've done is i've actually created a calendar for this world uh, so i've got named months of the year and the seasons and all that sort of stuff and i've created a calendar and on this calendar i write right this chapter starts on this date so I have a t- I know in over the course of a year or two years, however long the story goes, I know where these chapters, these events are happening. And then when I go and write another character, they all start from the same point. But like the, mm-hmm. you might you might skip a couple of weeks between the end of one chapter and the beginning of the next. And I just I am able to uh, color code the different characters and write up where this chapter that they're that I'm writing is actually happening in relation to the other stories, the other character stories going on around it. So there's a lot more planning and um, outlying in that regard for this one. And I actually, I broke down the chapters that I'm writing for the, for these characters when I'm writing them. And I'm like, right, write all the points that I want to hit and the things, the events that I want to have happen and to, uh, to get to the end point. And I, I actually, I don't enjoy the process of outlining because I feel... Mm. When I write in point form, everything just sounds naff. It just sounds so stupid when I write it in point form and elementary. And it's just like, oh, gross. It's just like, this is, I wouldn't even want to read this. But then mm-hmm. when you go and you write it out and you flesh the ideas and you put the character into it and, and you have dialogue and, and interaction with other things, it becomes a different thing. But just the, the point form of it, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> So yeah. I struggle. I struggle with that part um, until I can actually get into actually to writing it out, and it, it's become useful. So I'll get because I'm only focusing on one character. Or I'm you know sometimes worried about what other parts of the story are happening because it's not. I'm not writing it sequentially. Um, having mm-hmm. that to rely on, it's like right. So we're you know this is where we're going next, and sometimes characters and events that happen that I weren't ex- that I wasn't expecting pop up and so you might I might go off script a little bit and then I'm like well hold on do I want to follow this and how will it fit into the rest of what I've written here um, yeah. and sometimes those are the best things like that led them the most exciting and for me new and interesting um, because they seem to have come from the sub from my subconscious it's just like you know, been bubbling away in the background. And when I start going, following the thread of what's come up or what, where the potential it has, it starts connecting to all these other points that um, I had in mind for the story that I didn't, hadn't fleshed out fully. And then all of us, it's just become this exciting, I don't know, it feels more vibrant and more, more real <laughs> when it's just happening and flowing rather than, right, here's a list of the things that I need to have happen and I've got to take this yeah. and write it into here. It just um, – but that's in my head more than anything else, I think, that yeah. feeling, that expectation. Yeah, that makes – I understand that. That's I You know, I started being pretty heavy outliner because I um, – so my series has um, – I'm working on the prequel novella in book one now, but my outlining for it has kind of grown to I'm at about 13 books is where I want it to sit now. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I originally was going through and really like kind of heavy detail outlining 
because mm-hmm. uh, I just felt like I needed a lot of those details to line up. And then I found as I would go back and write that I deviated a lot because I like the characters would pull me in a certain direction or I'd have yeah. an idea. And so I kind of started like, this is the character arc that I need the character to go on or that the store, like for what I want to do later. Yeah. So I kind of have these more, now it's just kind of like vague, like I need the character to end up here. Yeah. But I leave myself a little space because mm-hmm. I'm the same. Like, I like to outline, but it can get boring. I feel like it sounds dumb. Like I'm like, no, nah, it's not going to work. Like, I totally get yeah. all that. Yeah. And so I found like giving myself very vague, not vague, more general, just this yeah. is what I need it to kind of go. Yeah. Leaves me room to come up with stuff while I'm writing. Because yeah, I'm also 100%. the the prequel I'm working on. There's elements of the last book that are in the prequel. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's a real like, so I have to think through it a bit, yeah. but I still, I'm trying to find a way to make sure it's still open enough that I don't trap myself. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, funnily enough, my prequel, um, Starbinder, it's a nove- the novella. It was, was the original prologue I had written for blood of the spear many, many years ago. And like, I picked it out because it was I picked I picked it how do I describe this without giving any spoilers away It's about a, a star binder so a star binder a, a um a, a class of or an organization within um the world of um Sobia which is where I set the story on the continent of Athme and they've kind of been they were prior to a great sundering many years before the start of the story they were very much prevalent in society and they were um uh, historians and um, healers and lawmakers and counselors to kings. And in this sundering, their order w- was um, kind of fell apart and disappeared. But they are still around in much fewer numbers than they are. This main ca- this character who is a starbinder in Blood of the Spear. I wanted to, to originally thought that I was going to flesh her background out more, so which I didn't do, and that was that was one of the reasons I thought, you know what, I had this prologue where I actually started with Starbinders, maybe I should do something with that, and it was set the setting is much earlier than the start of the book. It's the the, the book that ended up being Blood of the Spear, which I you know got changed a number of times. Um, so I was like, let's let's fill this little novella out. This this would be a good a good place to to go. And I took the the prologue that I had written, and I was written writing um, omniscient narration, and the magic systems were totally different. Pantheon and the uh, mythology was completely different. So there was a lot of um, changing, but it, it became quite easy to change and to adapt because I'd spent so much time writing Blood of the Spear and sorting all that stuff out and making a canon in my head that, um, and in my notes, that when it came to fitting this prologue, I was able to adjust it quite easily uh, this prologue this novella this pro- turning this prologue that had been discarded into a novella it was I was able to um, adjust it quite easily that that in many ways also gave me the opportunity to put some stuff into it that will reflect in the series further down the track like I already know where the, where the books are going and so mm-hmm. I was able to foreshadow some stuff in this novella for later which was exciting as well 